Welcome back to another awesome video. Today our thrift store find is this. We got a Sony tape deck and a fully automatic turntable from the mid 80s. Both of these were only $14, which seems like a great deal. But here's the challenge. They don't have standard connectors. I mean, there's, oh. there's not even a power cord on this thing. So the question is, how are we gonna hook these up? Can we hook these up? Let's give it a shot. These components were part of something called the Precise V10 system. So they all went together in a stack, and that's why they have proprietary connectors. I guess they thought it would be easier for people to hook them up if they just had one color-coded connector. So on the back of this tape deck, you just got System Control 1 and System Control 2. There's more than 20 connectors. You think we'll figure out how to hook all that stuff up? Probably not. <laughs> well, now in re reality, you know, you normally only have about five connectors, inputs, outputs, and power. And the turntable only has five connector pins with the standard outputs, so it should be easier to deal with. That little three connector prong is for uh, synchronized playback or whatever. You think we can do it? Maybe. Let's give it a try. If you don't want to watch us figure all this out, just skip ahead about five minutes. Spoiler alert, the tape deck we had problems with, the turntable we were more successful with. Yeah, look, they've even got, even got output and ACN. That's the most important clue right there. ACN and you've got those diodes. You know, four diodes, like the whole turn converting AC to DC, that's pretty standard stuff. Let me get this on continuity. This says ACN, and I've determined two of the pins go to like two pins on the on the diode. So basically, if I look at the third pin goes here to those two diodes, and the fifth pin goes here. So we got AC coming in here, DC should come in at, be coming out the other side out of two of those pins, and then so yeah, we're gonna look at the bottom of this board and see what else is hooked up because there's a bunch of connectors there these two wires went to the little rectifier diode and everything's really neatly labeled over here. So I'm able to look at the other side of that, those diodes and say, okay, minus and plus, and I get my 12 volts DC coming out of there. Well, 11.3 volts, close enough. What was interesting though, if I went to my ground in 12 volts, I'm only getting 0.9 volts. All these other label voltages, I'm not getting anything because there's just nothing coming through. But, so what I found was in addition to the two pins going to the rectifier diodes, there's another pin that I don't have anything up, hooked up to that is connected directly to ground. I took my minus, because this is a DC power supply, and sent that to ground, and the thing lit up. So let's see if we do that. So at this point, we've actually got power working to the deck, and we can make it, you know, rewind, fast forward, and play. The belts are a little weak. It's like it won't go with without help. There we go. So now it's playing. The problem is this. This meter is pegged. As a matter of fact, I think even without a tape in it, the meter is pegged. So that's a problem. Normally what I would do in this case is wiggle the record play switch and we're not getting output. I tried hooking the speaker up to the little out line output. So mechanically it's working, it's getting power. We're just getting a pegged meter. Meter's pegged there too. So that's not, something's still wrong. Let's see. Well, that's definitely doing the relay. I can hear the relay clicking when I hit record. Okay, it's a couple days later, thanks to the magic of Amazon Prime, I've got an actual AC transformer with the center tap and uh, 12 volts, uh, three wires out, 12 volts AC. We're gonna plug it into the wall, see if it works. I've been trying to sort of rig the power on the tape deck with the DC power supply. We're gonna give it the AC power at once with three wires, see if that fixes the meter problem, and if not, we'll just move on to the turntable. Well, at least it's working with AC power. We'll come back to the meters. Let's try the turntable. Okay, same sort of deal. We've got, got the connectors down here. Going over to the little, yep, there's diodes. It's marked with wires. I just think we're good there. Okay. One good thing about this turntable is it's got standard output jack, so I'm able to look it up to a preamp. And then just some computer speakers here. 
Got it hooked up to the AC power. Let's power that up. And we got a light. Let's see, it's fully automatic. Let's hit the start stop button. See if we get a little bit of anything. Just a very brief direct line feed here. Rick D's, the weekly top 40. Now listen carefully. What you're about to hear is this exact moment on the countdown two years ago today. The weekly top 40. Ow! This is a popular science stereo test record. We'll see what that sounds like. A good sound setup is capable of reproducing a frequency range from below 30 cycles per second to above 15,000 cycles per second. However, it is not only the frequency range reproduction that is important, it is the quality of sound reproduction that gives the listener a feeling of fulfillment. So I just need to clean up my wiring a little bit and I'll have a nice budget turntable with a rubber mat and a metal platter and fully automatic operation which are features you wouldn't get in a budget turntable today. On the tape deck I wasn't so lucky. It's got some sort of circuit problem that I've got to figure out but it's also got some broken plastic pieces which caused the cassette door to just flop all the way down. Tried super gluing those on but they sort of came loose again. Um, any sort of suggestions on this thing would be appreciated, but I'm going to go ahead and end this here and call it uh, part one. Maybe we'll be back uh, in, with part two in the future. Anyway, that's about it. See you next time for another awesome video.